see this razor? Shh. I tell you, words cannot express my love for this razor. This is the Rolls Royce of razors. Did you know that? It glides across your face like a hovercraft. It's cordless, light as a feather too. And talk about a close shave. I tell you, if it was any closer, I'd have to sell it as a vibrator. What are you laughing at? I tell you, the first time I used this razor, I liked it so much I went out and knocked off the warehouse. Seriously though, 70 quid up the town. Needless to say, I'm not asking 70. I'm not asking 60 or 50 even. I'm not asking 40. I'm not asking 30 for this beautiful machine. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let it go for 10. Who'll give me 10 pounds for it? Eddie, Eddie, over here. I'd have it, I'm feeling generous. And that's a dangerous trait in my profession. I don't mind telling you. There was an old trader called Patsy Murphy who died of it last year, you know. In fact, that's what they put on his tombstone. Here lies Patsy Murphy, who died of generosity on the 24th of May. But I'm a man who likes living dangerously, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to let this thing go for a fiver. I'm going to throw in this little hand mirror so you can watch your lily white skin while you're at it. Did I say a fiver? No, I meant three. Yes, three pounds. Who will give me three pounds for it? Yes, sold all right to the scruffy looking man down at the back. And why do you need it? Here, damn it, don't forget his mirror. Who is the fairest in the land? I don't think so. two pounds please sir don't put your hand up till you know what I have on me mind for you might not want what I'm selling and if I point to you and you had your hand in the air then I want me money regardless right? <laughs> dropped a fella in the mermaid the other night went down like a ton of bricks broke a bone in me hand <laughs> story of me life by even when a winner lose listen uh, uh, I haven't managed to shift that other thing yet, like, you know? And, uh, I don't want to do anything hasty or anything. I mean, another couple of days should do it. But you it's been a week already, Remy. I mean, you don't write and you don't phone. I mean, what am I supposed to think like? Who'll give me two quid for whatever's on me mind? Anybody? Yes. You're prepared to give me two pounds for whatever's on me mind? Well, supposing I was to tell you I have nothing on me mind, so it's <laughs> only two quid. Fair enough. Dermot, go and get me money. I wish everybody was like you. I'd be a millionaire be now. As it happens, I do have something on me mind. As it happens, this is your lucky day. I'm going to give you this alarm clock. And I'm gonna throw in this set of bone china for the parlor. Perfume from Paris for behind your ear. Some aftershave for the man in your life. A portable phone so you can give him a bell anytime you feel like checking up on him. A toolbox for the handyman. I thought you said you were handy. I'm handy, I only live around the corner. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do for you. I'm gonna give it till tomorrow to get the money for me. Tomorrow? Aye, tomorrow. Wednesday, right? Huh? Tomorrow's Thursday. Thursday. Are you sure? I thought, thought tomorrow was Wednesday. Polar bear with young. Sheets and pillowcases. What do you do? I'm gonna need another bag there, Dermot. What do you do in your room? Stop, that's enough. Just get me another bag, will ya? A Walkman. Oh. A duvet cover. Two electric blankets, an over and an under. And what about this beautiful lampshade, eh? Take it easy with that shade, Dermot. It's fragile. Like your brain. <laughs>
Thanks. Can I see you again sometime? I don't know about that. I'm married. Give us your number anyway. Sure, who knows? You see the miracles I perform here? Now I'm finished piddling around. I'm here to make money. And any man, woman, or child who is not prepared to spend at least 50 quid in this shop today should leave here and now. Go on, beat it. Go back from whence you came and quit wasting my time here. Because I'm going to lock the doors now and we're going to do some real business. I'm looking for 50 pounds a head from each and every one of you. And then I'm going to take the lot of you on a short trip up the Zambuzi River, and you're gonna come back with a boatload of bargain friggin'zini friggin'zinis! No one leaves here empty handed. In fact, some of you'll need help. Eddie, Eddie, over here, Eddie. Lock the doors, they're coming in the windows! If I didn't have to hand this over every day, I'd be laughing enough to get her, so I would have swear to God it breaks me bloody heart, by. Yeah? Say nothing to your uncle about what this. What do you take me for, eh? Say nothing to no one about it. All right, it. stop fussing, will you? All right, Trojan Eddie has come to town. Need to load up for next week. Yeah. Here you go. as you can find. So when did you start giving orders around here, eh, boy? Yeah, right. I'm mad. Had a visit from the powers this morning, looking for the money. I got this big old antique wardrobe after them a couple of weeks ago there. So I'll give it back to them. I've already sold it, sure, and spent the money. Well, I mean, I have to live. To tell you the truth, I think Ginger just fancies taking a smack at me over that other thing. I mean, how many times do I have to tell you she's trouble? But she nothing really happen anyway, like, you know? Just stay away from her altogether. I'll be all right. <laughs> I'll wangle my way out of it, all right. <laughs> Fucking prick. 
Jungs. So. How's business? Fine. Yeah? Do you miss me? Huh? Hey. We were a good team, man. Before that other little shit came along. Darren's all right. I mean he's all right. It's hard set to count to ten. You can count all right. Huh? We should break away on our own anyway. Start up our own little outfit. We could pull off a bit of a job. Why not? Still have the balaclavas. All right, I know the last job didn't go so well for you, Anna. Yeah, like 12 months. Yeah, and I mean to say, these things happen, like, you know? I mean, where else are we going to get it? I mean, it's not going to fall from the sky right is it? We are gathered here today to remember our deceased relatives, friends, and loved ones, and to honor them by our presence and our prayers. As I look around me here today, at the beautiful graves, the urns, the flowers, and the well-kept resting places, I can't but think how fortunate we are to be living in a land where the dead are not forgotten, where the souls of the departed are not left to be abandoned to the abyss. We still believe in that God, in communion with faith, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world. Only the other day. Poor old Kitty, God be good to her, huh? You keep the grave lovely anyway, John. Fair play to you. The grave, you keep it lovely, John. Well. It's the best I could do. She was a great wife and a very good mother. Is that all right? <laughs> Kathleen, smell this girl now, John. What? Did you say a prayer for poor old Kitty? Hi. Here's Betty. How are you, Betty? Hi, hey, Betty. See, the lads are here, of course, anyway. Every year, boy, without fail. It's a wonder he's not over there with them. It's a great wonder to me he isn't, then. I'm just not know to say a prayer for Doreen. I'm going to tell you one thing, son. What you fell on your feet the day you met her. Do you reckon? Yeah, I do. She's too good for him, don't imagine, ain't she, huh? She's not one bit too good for him. He comes from a very respectable family, and don't you forget it. Una ma, boy. Fair play to Madge. Hey, John. Yeah. Dormit. Who's that there? Huh? The fella talking to Jerry's daughter. Well, it's uh, Patsy McDonough. Patsy McDonough. Here with no shoes on you. Now you know me, a hardy snipe. Well, you won't be so hardy when you get a big dirty piece of glass on you. Stop fussing, will you? What were you smiling at anyway? Hi. Coming across the field. Oh, I was just yes, thinking about a song I heard in the pub last night. What was the name of it? I don't know. Something with an angel or something. I can't think of it now.
See you later. Let's go. Yeah? This is it? Yeah. Could be a good match for a Rosie, you know. That's not right, Jerry. She's too young and he's too old. I don't care what you say. Have the dinner ready, right? I want to be back to that happy shy you gave me for the breakfast. There's no point in eating it, Sauce. So Fucking dogs wouldn't live. Here's me father. I need to go. Myself and Raimi. Myself and Raimi knocked off a post office one time, no? They got away with it, no? Only for Eddie bought himself a new car, which looked kind of suspicious. <laughs> what did they give you, Eddie? Twelve months? They gave me a year because he wouldn't grass on another fella. But sure, as a cowboy said to the horse, why the long face? Would you get it? Why the long face? Yes, <laughs> you let me out of here, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Our little battle top wagon right down that hill there. Right across here, let the horses off. And this is where we pitched our camp. Yeah, we were. We were fine and snug here. Fresh water. And look, lashings of firewood for the fire. <laughs> Myself, my little sister Bridget, were in our alley all together. Running here. Through the woods. And... See those rocks? Yeah. We should be climbing up those rocks. I started rambling into town and knocking around with the local boys. Old billiard halls and that. And my sister Bridget met a settled lad and ran off and got married. Dormous mother and father. And that summer. The family thought it was time to move on. But I refused to go. My dad was very disappointed, I think. <laughs> Raging with himself, really, for dawdling too long at the one spot. And he tried to persuade me to go along with him, but... But... Sure. Sure, my mind was made up. And they went off without me. I never took to the road again. My wings were sort of clipped, I suppose. But you married a traveller. Aye. I married the traveller. Old Kitty. The Lord be good to her. I don't like the road myself. When I get married, I'm wanting to live in a house. With a little orchard out the back and a swing for the children and all. People think the travellers don't like beautiful things, but we do. I only think that we don't feel the cold as well, but that's not true either. I love the feel of fresh water. The sound of it. And the wonder of it. I 
comes from where it's going to and all. It's a fairly powerful thing, all right. I am. Um, I, I learned to swim in there, you know. There's a case I haven't her. I fell in there one day. And before I knew what you're, you know, well, I was out of swimming. <laughs> I'm sure everyone loves beautiful things. I think I'll go for a bit of a swim myself. What? Jesus, Kathleen. Keep an eye out, won't you? Tell me if anyone's coming. What? Go on with you! Jesus, Kathleen, I'd rather you wouldn't. I was acting to Mary Magdalene. Stripping in front of that old man. You think he's going to respect you after that? Do me a favour, will you? He does so respect me. And for your information, he wanted to marry me. Yeah? And you want to know why? Did you even ask yourself why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because you remind him of his wife, me, Auntie Kitty. That's why. <laughs> so you needn't bother your arse flattering yourself at all there, girl. For nausea, lads. Yeah. I'm me. Myself, no one else. And I won't be lumped with anyone else either, not by you or him or anyone. Whoa. Take it easy. Take it easy now. No need for that. Take it easy. What are you trying to do? Get the two of us killed or something? Look, stop worrying, will you? Nothing happened. Nothing happened in an hour and a half and nothing happened? Yeah, well, it's done now. It's over. Forget it. Come on, let's what go. What do you mean, forget it? Forget it. Come on, let's go. Just a minute, pal. I've been waiting here for you for an hour and a fucking half, mate! An hour and a half! So what? Do you want to do something about it or something? Huh? Come on! Come on, do something about it! Huh? Come on! I hope she was worth it, that's all I hope.
to go. You better off without her altogether. She's no bloody good, that one. Such a night as I have to cut in with her here. How are you, Shirley? How are you? I'm off now, Eddie. I wanted to get home and get ready for my late night bingo. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Listen here. Thanks. Look, if there's a problem, just say so. There's no problem. Okay. I mean, I still have a stake in this house, you know? A big stake. So if there's a problem. There's no problem. Right. Go ahead upstairs, lads. Please. Good girls. So, what happened? What do you mean, what happened? Nothing happened. I just need a place to stay for a little while, that's all. I mean, if it's too much to ask that I can come home and stay in my own house, well... Look, I told you before, you can come back any time. told you that, you know that? You're, you're still my wife and your mother. There's always room for you here. You know that? Yeah? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, well, I sort of heard something to the contrary, Eddie, like, you know? Anyway, I don't worry about it. I won't be stopping too long. I stick my bags in the little box for Um What? Nothing. Just promised Jenny she could have her own room, that's all. It's all right, don't matter. And where's the clock? I don't tell me. The price was right, right? What does she stand for? Don't know. A couple of weeks, something like that. I told her out straight I'm not having it. I mean to say, the children are upset enough without all that. Well, maybe you have to put your foot down this time, Eddie. I mean, what are people going to think, like, her coming back whenever she feels like it? Anyway. Your mother and myself were drooling over these the other day. You should have seen her, Eddie. Imagine to see a holiday in the sun. What do you think? I don't know. She was. I mean, I don't mind myself as long as there's sunshine. How much? Well, if we would book it now, we get it under a thousand for the lot of us. And that's not bad. I mean, we'd be going in peak time, you know? 9.75. A thousand, more or less. Would you like a house, would you? I know. I wouldn't expect that. No, I'd be money saved and all. You'd have a great time out there, sure. The kids and your mother. I was half thinking of branching out on my own, like, you know, a thousand could go a long way. Well, at least think about it. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'll definitely think about it. I want a word with you. What? Get in. Take the lads up home from me, Betty, will you? Yeah, right. Bye, Daddy. Yeah, right, lads. See you later on, eh? Change your get a bit. You didn't leave Dermot alone with the girl at any time last night, did you? No. Did you uh, leave her to the door? No, we dropped her at the end of the field. What did you do that for? We didn't want to wake the children. Was that Dermot's idea? No, I don't think so. Hmm? No, it was, uh, what do you call it? I don't know, all our ideas. Like. All your ideas? Yeah, more or less. 
More or less? Yeah. Well, which was it? Huh? I mean, was it more or less? Well, then how come she didn't get home till half eleven? Don't know. She must have went somewhere else. Oh. Where? Show me. Patsy McDonough! You whore, man, you! Stop him, you fucking prick! I'll bet you're good looking! Let go of me! Jesus, Ginger, Ginger! Come on! Fuck it! Fuck off, you! Grown man, put the old three or four inches of water, would you? You can! What? What are you trying to do? Kill the chap or something? Jesus, I mean, what did he do anyway? Bring him here. Here, get this now. Then get out of here. Take the mail boat to London tonight. Don't ever come back here again. Or I'll kill you. I don't know no one over there. I know, I know we don't over there, do you know? What a bastard. Yeah. You're going to get her for me one of these days, you know that? Every time I look at you, I feel like shouting, man overboard. I'm all right. Huh? Nothing. What did you say I said? I said I'm all right. <laughs> See, you're going down with this ship, boy. I feel like throwing you a life jacket or something. Take a look at that fish. Take a right look at that fish. Do you see those rings? Do you? They're my father's rings. I broke a fella's jaw with that fish one night. And another night, another night, I broke a fella's nose. Yeah. 
scar. Do you see it, do you? One night in the pub brawl, the fellow bit me there. He bore his teeth into me like a wolf. And then he squeezed me by the balls. And he squeezed, and he squeezed, and he squeezed until we know it. I won that fight. I won all those fights. I won every fight I ever fought. You know what I mean, like? Ever. What? 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 What not? I said, here you. Now yeah, fuck off, mate. What? I said, fuck off, mate. All right, Mr. Power, take it easy now. Take it easy! That's what you always say to me is take it easy! What do you take me for? Take it easy. That's what he does, he takes it easy. You want me to end up like him? Do you? He's a peasant, a buffer, he's a punk. But I am a king. And a king needs a queen. You people, you haven't a clue. No idea, none. For my family, my dada and my mom came in. Yeah. They have no idea. None whatsoever. None. Get out of my fucking way. Come on, Ginger. Fuck off home, you. Sorry about that, Matt. Why did you bring them in here in the first place, for Christ's sake? Jesus Christ! So now then, Eric, so what is your major decision of the evening? Is it going to be call for a ball, or is it going to be shoot for the stars? I shoot for the stars. You're going to shoot for the stars. Very good. Press the button there, and the very best of luck to you. There's lots of money in the kitty now. Just remember that. Let's see how you do. 4,500 you have. You've doubled it. The girl's in bed. Overworked, Eddie, and you know what they say about that, don't you? I don't know. I was working. Just got roped into something, that's all. Still the good little boy you used to be, huh? Coming when you're called. Yeah, well, not for much longer, I can tell you. Yeah? Yeah. Thinking about branching out my own, you know? I mean, you'd be better off with a sort of a permanent place downtown, you know? Let them come to me for a change. Yeah, but it all takes money, though, don't it? Yeah, I'm starting to get a few quid together now. Like, you know, cream a little bit off from the top now and then. Like, you know. <laughs> and before you know it, you'll be taking holidays in the sun and everything. So, tell me about this place, then. I mean, do you have a particular place in mind in that? Yeah. There's a place downtown that's going for half nothing, I believe. I mean, it'd take a bit of doing up in that, but... I mean, don't need a palace or anything. Four walls and a door and I'd make money. I see, says the blind man. Trojan Eddie, huh? Yeah. Little hack me head and all. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Eddie, is there a spare key around here anywhere? Huh? Yeah, out in the kitchen there. Hanging up in the old yoke me bob out there. I'm going out for a while. Don't wait up for me.
aus. To be watching the cars. But sure, the cars are out there. I know, that's the point. You're supposed to be watching them. I mean, what's the problem, anyway? The girl asked me to dance. What am I supposed to do? Refuse her? I mean, I feel sort of sorry for her getting mixed up with this crowd. She made her bed. Yeah, I know all that. Nevertheless, anyway, you're getting paid to watch the cars, not to dance with her. So watch the cars. What's wrong with you, huh? I mean, this is just a. What do you call it? I mean, what's wrong with you? Are you going to watch the cars or not? No, I'm not. Watch the cars. Where are you going? If you go, I'm not paying you. I'm warning you, Remy, I'm not paying you. Watch the cars. What's wrong with you? When your mother died and left you, or your house with them all alone. Do you have 
have to go back. Yeah, I have to be there in case anyone needs a lift home, you know. So did she look good? Who? The bride. Oh yeah, sure, grand. Lovely. So who was there, all? Oh, I don't know. Sure, they came from near and far, like, you know. Yeah. Pat, huh? Yeah. So who was there from near? Yeah, no one you'd know. I mean, they were all, what do you call it, like, you know? Yeah. No, it's just that I told saw Shirley get in there one day. Yeah? When was that? Not so long ago. Well, if you did, she's gate crashing then. When was it? I don't know, not too long ago. All dressed up? You didn't see her then, no? Look, she's not invited or anything, if that's what you're getting at. I mean, I'm not invited. I'm working. I mean, I'm not a guest or anything. Yeah, I know all that. I'm not saying anything. Well, you're looking at me as if to say something. What? Ah, oh, well, look. Nothing. Forget it. Better be getting back. You're as touchy lately. It's like walking on eggshells talking to you. I mean, what's supposed to be wrong with you anyway? I don't know. Just sort of a feeling about this one, you know? But you, why don't you just get out of it? I don't think I can anymore. It's as if the story's already begun, you know? And I'm sort of I'm locked into it or something. But that's ridiculous, Eddie. Yeah, I know it is, but that's the way I feel. <sighs> Look, I'm gonna go. I'll see you tonight sometime, eh? Yeah. Be careful, won't you? I'll be all right. See ya. They say love is like a flower Even when it's new But love is like a flower Love is like a diamond But they haven't got a clue Love can take you to the stars Then love makes a fool of you Once I had a lover Who swore his love was true He left me for another But what am I to do? You know what I'm talking about careful, when dance. love makes a fool. I sort of hope that you'd fall for a slightly older woman this time around. Well, maybe the next time. But what am I to do? That's you know what Maybe I'm talking about. It'll all work out all right in the end with the help of the Lord. Aye, maybe. At the same time, John. Her face in every flower, her name on every rose. You'll need her arms around you when the cold winds blow. You think that you're in heaven, but you haven't got a clue. Love can take you.
Strongest man I ever met. I heard that, all right. I mean, Jerry here is strong, but he couldn't hold a candle to my dad. I mean, you couldn't hold a candle to my dad, all right? I could not. <laughs> the old bastard. Well, where is he now? Well, Jerry, I'll set for Sadra. Yeah, set as I'll ever be. Got plenty of mine. I'm going to slap every penny of that on it. And I want to see teeth and hair flying in all directions. <laughs> I'm going into the house. Right. Right, Kathleen, I, I'll, um, I'll be in a minute. <laughs> what? What? Isn't that well for me, boy? Fair play to you, John. You all right? Why wouldn't I be? No reason. You better go back to the party, boy. What do you want? Just run back the car. Take the keys up to him. Family she did. This for that other fella. He's dead. Where are you been? I had to drive Mrs. Cash home. What did you tell me? You did? With the money again? You gave it to Kathleen. Saw Dermot. Wait outside with the rest of them. That blow again, I shall. She's a buffer. Mockery, you just have a breath. Uh, 
laughing by his dinner bunk with the bride. They took the case of money and everything. Eleven grand. War. Right, lads, the Great Southern Hotel, let's go. Come on, boys. Come on. Come on, come on, will you? Hurry up there. Jesus, let's go. Come on. Oh, Dermot, is that it? They know you are, Dermot. They're coming to get you. I don't know, the war drums or something on you people. So you'd better get out of there fairly pronto. Oh, by the way, thanks for dropping me in it. There was nearly 11 grand in that little suitcase, you know? Yeah, well, you might be glad to know that I've been getting a fucking evil eye ever since. I mean, what the fuck were you thinking of? I could end up pushing up the piss beds here. You're gonna have to give that money back to them, you know? What do you mean, how come? I was responsible for that money. I mean, sooner or later, they're going to come calling, you know? And another thing, I never saw you tonight either, right? I never saw you. Ah, the money's gone. So the, money, the money's gone. Ah. That wasn't exactly a marriage made in heaven now, was it? Makes you and me look like the perfect pair, huh? <laughs> poor Eddie. What's poor about me? You just keep getting left behind all the time. I mean, there's that young lad. He ended up with the money and the girl. Will he live to tell the tale, though? That's the trouble with you, Eddie. You want to live too long. I mean, you have to end up with the money and the girl. Otherwise, For the last time, no bother. Three to one is the odds, take it or leave it. Come on. You know what I, do. Come on. I sat five big ones on Marcy to give me four to one odds. I'll give you three to one. You tell me I'll take him three rounds or under. Right. Okay. Right. You're on. You're okay. on. Okay, alright. Don't start the time. Caught these two before. Oh, the guy, you. He carved his jig in the nose. Show us the colour of your money, so. Yeah, go back to your old flat. You fucking 
throw you out where you don't need to. You treat me! Ah, back here, I hope so. We are supposed to. I hit you slap. We're not going anywhere! I tell you, don't be an eye in my fucking head anymore now. Don't come back! What are you fucking looking at? Huh? What are you doing? You're supposed to be doing. You're ripped, yeah. He's a ballsy little bastard, I tell you. Coming into me yard like that. <laughs> he must be feeling lucky or something. Listen. I want to be straight with you. I want to see her again. Hear her voice, at least. I, I don't care what she used to say to me. You know? I mean, I don't really care. You know? Whatever. I'd like you to tell her that, if you should see her again. And uh, you can tell her also that uh, I don't care what she's done. I take her back whenever she wants to come back. I mean, I'm telling you this because I know that, that you'll understand, like. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She says, yeah, he says. Your missus could be banging right in front of you. You'll still take her back. Because you're a sucker. I mean, I know. I know we're all suckers when it comes to women. But you, <laughs> you take it to the extreme. I mean, you're a fucking double-decker. I mean, you should have held on to that money, you know. I did. I mean, I just gave it to Kathleen. Oh, I gave it to Kathleen. You didn't give it to Dermot. I told you I never even saw Dermot. Just like you never left him alone with her that night. Just like he never walked her across the field, like. I suppose you thought that that was funny, you and him. Hmm? And you better pray, too, that that money is intact when I find him. Otherwise, someone's going to get hurt around here and it won't be me. Now, fuck off with your year. And another thing. Don't get too close to that other fella down there if I was you. <laughs> because he don't look too lucky to me. Aftershave for the man in your life. Perfume from Paris for behind your ear. An overnight case. Just in case. Gonna need another bag, Amy. Another brain would be more like it. A portable phone! So you can give him a bell when you feel like checking up on him. Two pairs of bedroom slippers, his and hers. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm definitely going to need another bag, Remy. A toolbox for the handyman. I thought you said you were handy. I'm handy. I only live around the corner. <laughs> I don't think I'm exactly cut out for this eternity, Lark, if that's what you mean. Is the money still intact? More or less. Why? I'm all loaded up now, Eddie. Come on, let's go and get out of here. Yeah, right. I'll be there in a minute. Listen, she's going to have to go back sooner or later. You know that, don't you? Yeah? Absolutely. Well, she does. You'll be left high and dry, and so will I for siding with you. Now, I got something going on. You could take the money and come in with me. 50-50 down the middle. Of course, you'd have to lie fairly low for a while, but at least you'd be making a few bob while you're down there. What do you think? I don't know, Eddie. I mean, I don't think she wants to go back to him yet, you know? Then you'll have to bail out. 
run out our name in. I don't know about that. I mean, we didn't do it for the money, you know? What did you do it for? I don't know. Love and all that jazz, I suppose. Yeah, well, dying for love is one thing, Dermot. Living to tell the tale is another. Yeah, but you're not gonna let us just walk away with the money anyway. Well, tell him it's the price of love. I thought you wanted me to give it back to him. Yeah, well, it changed my mind. Now get chill, Dermot. We'll me sleep. I don't know. I'll have to think about it. Let's see. Where will you be? I don't know. I'll call you. Did you say she'd be wanting for it again? She'd be looking for a hundred a week anyway, I'd say. Yeah? No, it's just that there's a few damp patches around the place, like, you know. She wouldn't drop it down to the 50 for the first year, would she? Just to give me a chance to get on my feet a bit. I'd say the lowest she'd go now would be 75, like, you know. Yeah? But should I suppose you'd be looking for a place with windows and everything, would you? No, no not necessarily. Windows only distract the customers after, like, you know. Hey. Oh, absolutely. How is she keeping anyway? Uh, she's well, thanks. I'll ask her to drop down to the 50 if you like. Do you want me to? I do. All right, so I'll ask her, sure. It don't cost nothing to ask, do it? No. One for the lady in red, one for the lady in purple, and one for the toothless wonder down the front there. That's the kind of thing that happens when Trojan Eddie comes to town. Do you ever remember a fella called Bargain Joe, man? Yeah, of course I remember Bargain Joe. We used to have a stall in the market one day a week. Bargain Joe, yeah. He was a nice fella. I used to stand and watch that fella for hours on end when I was a little lad, you know? Fascinated me, he did. Jesus, he was a real jingler boy. He could sell you something you didn't even want, you know? Yeah, I know. Flints and lighters and tin openers and all that. I mean, it wouldn't do, you know, or nothing. He just managed to sell you something you didn't particularly need. That's all. And the banter he had, fucking genius, boy. Do you know what his motto was? Always buy cheaper than you sell. Simple. Well, I'm sort of like him now, you know? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Trojan Eddie. <laughs> and I come out with all this spiel, too, you know? It just sort of spills out of me. Hello, Mrs. Fancy a canary going cheap. <laughs> yeah? Eddie, it's Dormy. I'm out in the old caravan in Cleary's Cross in case you're looking for me. For you. Hello, Dermot. Yeah? Well, uh, what do you think? What, what do you think I mean? I mean, Jesus, I mean, come on. Yeah, I'm going to bail out. Pick us up tonight at the cross, will you? Yeah, yeah, I'll have the money, don't worry. What do you think I'm going to do, leave it here or something? Yeah, right, 12 it is. What 
you got for me? What do you want? What do you got? Yeah, right. Oh, listen, uh, we might have to shift a bit of stuff early tomorrow morning. Yeah, right. Mr. Shop. stuff now or not. That's why we came here for it. That's the trouble with you, Remy. You never lose any sleep. Not gonna lose any sleep over that little prick, anyway, that's for sure. Why, do you think he's gonna lose any sleep over you? Where is he, though? That's what I'd like to know. <sighs> Fuck him. Bad enough with her people and the powers looking for me. Now the McDonald's when I get in in the act. I think I cracked the rib trying to get away from them. Where's Kathleen? She's upstairs having a wash. So where's the money? The money's gone, Eddie. What do you mean it's gone? We had to leave it behind, sure. The McDonald's probably have it by now. You're joking me, right? You're joking me. Shit, I don't believe it, you fucking idiot, you! So what could I do? I mean, they were starving in on top of us. I don't believe it. I do not believe it. I'm after getting a rake of stuff on the strength of... Cause you know what I should have done. I should have... Oh, fuck! How did they know where to find us is what I'd like to know. What? Shirley. What do you know? A fugitive of love, huh? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Uh, go to bed, will you? Do you know, I think I will. I mean, after all, when a man leaves a woman with her legs in the air to go running back to his little missus, it's time to call it a day, I think, don't you? <laughs> You're an even bigger idiot than I thought you were. <laughs> Mind you, one thing I would say for Dermot, though, is at least he'd never leave a woman with her legs in the air, would you, Dermot? What are you on about? Jesus, you're slow. <laughs> Don't mind her, Eddie. Bitch! I'm like here to traps in and out like you own the place or something, making a fool of me, hardly looking at the children. So what if I'm an unfit mother? Sue me. You're no great shakes yourself. I do me best, at least. Ah, tell it to the judge. What did you say? You heard me. You try and come between me and those children, and I swear to God. All right, Eddie, keep your shirt on. I'm not even sure the boat's yours, for Christ's sake. Yeah. It's all right, lads. Have a 
happens all right. Any money, I swear. Where's our fucking money? I don't know what you're talking about. I thought I told you to get out of here. Yeah, I know, but I don't know no one over there. There's nothing here, John. Just leave him alone, please. Said the money was. Maybe the Tony has it. Trojanetti. Kathleen said Darren was on the phone to him a couple of times. Trojanetti. Maids, when you're young, never wed an old man. Cause he's got no valorum, he's lost his ding dorum, da. Maids, when you're young, never wed an old man. He's got no valorum, he lost his ding dorum da. Maids, when you're young, never wed an old man. Do you think I snitched on him? Is that it? Yeah. What are you siding with him all the time for? He's no friend of yours. You could be on fire and he wouldn't even cross the road to piss on you. What did he give you, Amy? 20 quid? 30? 40, huh? Let it rest, will you? Yeah. You didn't hear me complaining when he was brought in instead of me. I let it rest. There was nearly 11 grand in that little <laughs> suitcase. Can you understand that? Yeah, I think I can understand that. I'm I really... understand this. Thanks to you, I'm back on the street again. So what, Eddie? You want me to lose some sleep over it? Just like you lost sleep when you were trying to freeze me out. Freezing me out, your best fucking friend for a fucking tinker. I did time for you. No, you got caught. You always got caught. I'm to blame because you got caught. Well, now you're caught again, Eddie. You have a room full of stuff and no money to pay for it. So what are you going to do? Give it all back? Tell the man you're sorry? <laughs> I mean, I know I've done some queer things on you in my time and all, Eddie. But there was things I didn't do on you too, you know? What do you mean? Let it rest, will you? Did he? Yeah. Yeah, a bit of a windfall, Ginger, like can all. Bit of a windfall, by. You're a smirky little bastard. Anybody ever tell you that? Yeah. I've a dirty kind of a smile, all right. <laughs> but you're what harm, huh? Little prick. Now, who told you that? What? No, money kidding you. Want 
Talked you. That sort of way to smirk off your face, didn't it? Huh? Didn't it? I don't see you smiling now, you fucking little prick, you. Laugh at me. You laugh at me. I don't think so. <laughs> Are you after going into mourning, or what? How do you mean? I haven't seen you around like for, for a few days. Look, if this is about that or that little shit bag, I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. Should, should he be trying to pull the wool over all our eyes? Did you know? that he was with the McDonough's the night they went after Dermot. And for what? Thirty pieces of silver, which he probably never even got. What is it with you, anyway? I mean, I took you off the streets where nobody else would even look at you. A feckin' little jailbird be Jesus. I made money for you, mate. Like a lot of money. You cost me a lot of money, too. I don't mind telling you. Eleven grand. Does that ring a bell? Eleven grand, right? Don't know anything about that. That's not what I heard. And in the meantime, you're driving around in my van. Jesus, I must be going soft in that bloody head or something. <laughs> you want a van back? Here. Take it. Stick it. <laughs> Jesus, you know, we used to laugh at you. You made our lives worth living. Why, and you think no one's laughing at you or something? <laughs> What'd you say? What'd you say? Come back here, you're a Tory. 
I'm not finished with you yet. You got no right turning your back and walking away from me like that. Because without me, you haven't got a chance. You haven't got a hope in hell. You see, I know who I am and what I am and how much I'm worth. But you, you haven't got a clue, not an idea, none whatsoever. You, you come crawling back in your belly, boy. You just wait and see. Trojan Eddie, Trojan fucking Egypt. Pencils, 50 pence a dozen. I mean, you know what to say. You can ride a horse to water, but a pencil must be lead. 50 pence, and I'll throw in an old rubber. Yes, one, two, three. I'm gonna last for to change our minds. Now, candles, a box of 20 for a pound. I have it in good authority, there's gonna be plenty of cuts this winter, so don't be stuck. And if you're one that lights the odd candle in the chapel every morning, they'll take the money you'll save. One, two, three, four, five. Lock the doors, they're coming in the windows. Daddy's Daddy. I never said they were waterproof. Waterproof for a pound? Give me a break. There's someone here to see us. What's that? Oh, yeah, right. Thanks. You pull over that old door after you, won't you? Yeah. Thanks, Arthur. Where's Dermot? He's after bailing out me. Bad luck me he never shun. It's just that my husband has someone come to look at the place tomorrow night, you know? So, uh, I thought you might like to have his few bits and pieces. Thanks. Right. Well, sure, I'll leave you to it, so. Sure, poor Amy. He wasn't the worst of them at all, you know. Give us a shout on your way out.
you want, I got. And if you can get it cheaper anywhere else, then I want to know about it. Trojan Eddie's the name. Bargain Zini's the game. A Walkman, I got it. A Razor, I got it. A guitar, I got it. A flask, I got it. A keyboard, had one yesterday. So listen, don't be going out of it. Get down here now. Trojan Eddie's at William Street. Now. Enjoy yourself. Capture the atmosphere, the color, and the magic of the East with the finest Indian food at this restaurant. What are you doing sitting there? I said now. sleep my little tinker let all your troubles pass you by for you have no place to camp now oh that's a tinker's lullaby When your mother died and left you Oh, you had to fend all alone All in this land of saints and scholars But still you had not got a home You have no place to camp now Oh, that's a tinker's lullaby Oh, that's my tinker's lullaby 